Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are watching us and following us online, you are meeting us at a very beautiful time. It is a time of sitting around the word, the word of God. We are in a season of thanksgiving and therefore we are speaking into that season and we are enjoying what God is doing here in Jesus' name. I want us to go to the Bible in the book of Hebrews. I want us to read chapter 6. Verse 9 to 11. Hallelujah. I want us to go to Hebrews chapter 6. Verse 9 to 11. It says, but beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation. So there are things that accompany salvation. Though we speak in this manner. That's number 10. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward him or towards his name. In that you have ministered to the saints and you continue to minister. The last verse. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. I want us to read verse 10 again please. Verse number 10 again, please. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love which you have shown toward his name and that you have ministered to the saints and you do minister. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your word and thank you for your utterances. I pray this morning that you may speak to us as we call to remembrance your goodness. I pray, touch a life, change a life, speak into our hearts and change us from the inside. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Say amen. I want to speak on looking deeper into remembrance. Looking deeper into remembrance. Last Sunday, we dealt with remembrance. But today, we want to push the boat into a further distance from the shore. We want to go into deeper waters. Hallelujah. Remembrance is a very important thing in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's something that God values a lot. And when you read in this verse number 10, you realize that not only does God value remembrance, he practices remembrance. Hallelujah. Did you see what I said? Amen. Not only does God value remembrance, he practices remembrance. In the King James Version, it says, For God is not unrighteous, to forget your work and your labor of love. The ones which you have shown toward his name. And that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. God is not unrighteous to forget your way. It's like, it's like when you forget you become unrighteous. 
So God says, when it comes to forgetfulness, I personally, God, have chosen not to forget. When you serve me, when you work for me, when you do things for me, some of you, you are sponsors and you sponsor the work of God and the kingdom of God. You give sacrificial. God says, how can I forget you? He said, I will be unrighteous myself to forget your labor of love and your work which you have done and continue to do. It's like God has made a vow that he will also honor the principle of remembrance. Wow. God values remembrance to the extent that he doesn't just require it from us. He, God, practices remembrance. Yeah. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and the words, the King James, now the King James is the closest to the original translations. When it now begins to use words like unrighteous to forget. Now you realize that it, it's, an, it's a very serious emphasis in what it means to God when forgetting goes into play. It, it, it goes to the extent of being termed as an unrighteous act. Hallelujah. Somebody say God values remembrance. Maybe also say God remembers. He himself, he remembers. Hallelujah. So when you do nice things for God and you serve God, God records you in a list of the people he must never forget. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I said God is not a forgetter. And I will not be a forgetter. Because I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. So God is committed. And has committed himself to remember. Hallelujah. So when we walk in forgetfulness. We display a high level of unrighteousness. We also reveal that is that we deny our sonship because if our father is a remember is that English I said if our father is not a forgetter now we become forgetfulness we, we, we are denying his nature ask your neighbor whose child are you because every seed produces after its own kind. Yeah. Lions give birth to lions. Cows give birth to cows. God gives birth to gods. And the nature of the seed carrier should be manifested in the seed manifestation. So you realize that this, the forgetting is not a welcome pr practice in the kingdom of God. It's not in our nature and it's not in our spiritual DNA to be forgetful, to not care about what has been done for us. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Tell me, but don't forget. Don't be a forgetter. You are a child of God. Hallelujah. So like I said, I don't want to keep you long today. So I want to look at five things that can help you to not be a forgetter. Yeah. You see, because if you can, there, is, there are more things that can help you not to, but I've chosen just five. So because I don't want to overfeed you. I don't want you to have constipation. I want you to have just enough to go and process. Yes. So I say five things. That will really help me not to be a forgetter. Yeah. 
Because it's not in our nature in the kingdom. It's not supposed to be seen in us and in our lives. This, this tendency of forgetting important things. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you ready? <laughs> Number one. How to foster remembrance in your life. Number one. These are keys that will help you to remember. Number one. Uphold history. Uphold history. Yes. Refuse to forget the important events of your past. Refuse. Be intentional about it. That you do not forget important events of your past. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Don't just move, move. And, and just be excited about the now. Because the now is a byproduct of yesterday. You are what you are today. Because there are certain important events that happened in the past. So when you forget your past, you may forget to be grateful. So I say history. Pay attention to history. Let's go to the Bible. Exodus chapter number 1. I went to read from verse number 5. Exodus chapter 1. I want to read from verse number 5. Look at this. It says, and those who were descendants of Jacob were 70 persons. For Joseph was in Egypt already. Now, the Bible here is talking about when uh, Joseph was a governor. Do you see? Like second in command. And then how the brothers came. And then when the brothers came, they... Um, they, they got to know each other and he sent them to bring the father and bring all his household. So the Bible says, upon the arrival, they were 70 persons in total. Verse 6. And Joseph died and his brothers and all that generation. So, in the process of time, see, we are talking history here. Someone say history. In the process of time, after Joseph helps the family to move from the land of famine into the land of Egypt, and he gave them a nice space called Goshen, and he he negotiated with Pharaoh that his father must be in a good place, and he gave them a fertile land called Goshen. And so they stayed there and they began. This 70 began to multiply. Hallelujah. So they multiplied, multiplied. And they became a nation. They became many. Over time. As we all do. Joseph died in his generation. Meaning that all his brothers and Joseph died over time. Now let's read the word. But the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly, multiplied and grew exceedingly mighty. And the land was filled with them. So they outgrew Goshen like they, they began to take over. Like they were really becoming many. Verse 8. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. Yeah. So, time has passed. Joseph died. The pharaoh that was the king at the time of Joseph dies. And there arose a new pharaoh. And the Bible says this pharaoh did not know Joseph. And he said to his people, it is okay. Verse 9 is okay. And he said to his people, look, the people of 
the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Let's turn, let's move. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply and it happen in the event of war that they also join our enemies and fight against us and so go up out of the land. Look at verse 11. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with their burdens and they built for Pharaoh supply cities Pithon and Ramesses. The last verse. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were in dread of the children of Israel. Now this is what is happening. I'm teaching you remembrance. I say, teach me remembrance. You see, Pharaoh, this new Pharaoh, didn't know Joseph. In other words, he didn't know history. He didn't know that there was once was a man by the name of Joseph. And that that man, when this our Egypt was faced with seven years of famine, like Egypt was about to be wiped off. They rose a man by the name of Joseph who came up with a strategy to preserve the lives of the Egyptians. Like, like the person who is the person of these people was actually the rescuer of the nation. If Pharaoh could have read, this new Pharaoh could have read history or asked questions, he would have behaved differently to the children of Israel. But he didn't know that these are the people that their son rose to power and their son was responsible for the preservation of a nation. And so there arose a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. And how do you not know Joseph if you are a king? He should have read the history of his nation. And he should have known about Joseph. And if he knew about Joseph, he would have remembered what Joseph did. And if he could have remembered, he would have treated the people of Joseph differently. Yeah. Ignorance of history is very bad. Yeah. So I said dementia. <laughs> Yeah. You should never forget where you come from. <laughs> never forget who helped you. Never forget the situations of life you were in and how somebody came through for you. Forgetting history is one of the problems of remembrance. You know, when people go on in life, they go on in life, they, they can just forget people. Yes. Yes. <laughs> tell, tell your neighbor, pay attention to history. Yes. There arose a pharaoh who didn't know history. Who didn't know Joseph. See, the Bible says, and he made a decree, a law, that they should now abuse the children of Israel and make their lives difficult and make them do hard labor. Because he was trying to break their spirits. But the grace of God being the grace of God, the more they oppressed them, the more they might apply it. Tell your neighbor, I think I need to think. <laughs> no, tell your neighbor, I think I need to think after this service about where I come from and who played major role in my life. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Recently, I heard a story about a pastor. The founder of the church in South Africa a very big ministry that you know. If I mention the name of the church, you will know it. He died like we all at the point will die. Someone said the pastor died. 
Yeah. And then his successor took over. As it is supposed to happen. His successor took over the church. Hallelujah. Now to my shock and surprise. The, the, the successor immediately forgot. That immediately forgot his father. How do I know? They say that he chased the wife of the founder from the church and the children of the founder. He said, go and look for another church. I'm now in control. He, he forgot history. He forgot the pain of starting. He forgot how the dead man labored. He forgot. He forgot. He forgot. Someone say he forgot. When you forget, you do terrible things. Yes. I mean, you chase the wife. Already that's a curse. The thing they are doing will not go anywhere. You are chasing the wife. A, a widow. Not just a widow. A founder. And, and, and the children. And you choose not to take care of them. And you chase them out of the church. What wickedness is this? Tell a neighbor, do not forget. History is very important. If he could have just remembered a little bit about what the founder and the wife did to get where he took over. Just a little bit of remembering. I think he will not have done what he did. But the doing of what he did is a sign that he is a forgetter. Yes, he's not a remember. <laughs> Hallelujah. Number two. Hallelujah. So to, to not forget, pay attention to history. I'm trying to teach you the things that will help you not to forget. Pay attention to history. Number two. If you don't want to struggle with forgetfulness you should not let your success to destroy your memory don't let your success to destroy your memory yeah this one is very common it's very common success has a way of wiping people's memories. Hallelujah. It is very common for successful people to forget how they arrived where they are. You have to fight this tendency of rich people. You have to fight it. You have to fight it. Somebody say fight it. Yeah. Don't let your success destroy your memory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. It's very common that when people start becoming successful, they start pushing everyone around. Yeah. When they come, everyone must know they have come. Like they forget. That they have not always been where they are. And that God helped them to get where they are. And that people played a part in who they have become. Success has a way. It's very common for rich people. To allow success to destroy their memory. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 8 again. This time around, let's read from verse number 10. <coughs> Look at it. When you have eaten and are full, 
Then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Beware. You see, be, because success has a way of destroying memory. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes, which I command you today. Beware. Like, be intentional in remembering. Because success can destroy your memory. Wow. Let's go. And when your heads and your flocks multiply, please, is this where we are? We are okay. Lest when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them. 13. And when your heads, this is a language of rich people. These verses are describing successful people. And when your heads and your flocks multiply, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. Wow. When your heart is lifted up, and forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you can see that God is also is like is aware that as I'm blessing you, you have the chances, high chances of forgetting me. I get so God is like, I, I, I'm going to prosper you. I want you to prosper. And, and, and I want you to increase your silver, your gold, your heads, your, your build houses. You will dwell in them. It's like, please. This success I'm bringing to you, which is my will for you to prosper. It should not destroy your memory. Yeah. Because your relationship with me is more important than the things I want to give you. So don't choose the things over me and forget me. Yes. Yes. Success has a way of Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. successful. The, the memory is destroyed. The mind, the mind is not working properly. So with your successful self, you can't build a better house in the village for your parents. So like even you, when you come, you can be able to sleep with your mother. Yeah, but but it's like it's like sometimes when people become successful, it's like the it's like the enemy hijacks their minds and destroys their memory. Yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. And so God is lamenting. He's like, look, it's in my nature to cause you to increase, to multiply, to 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 move in serious wealth. You have not seen anything. You guys are going to be wealthy. I say you are going to be wealthy. You are going to move out of the realm of rich to a realm of wealthy. Well, when you are wealthy, you don't even know how much you have. You don't even know how many properties you have. You just know that the office is managing them. I'm preaching. But God is lamenting. Look, look at Deuteronomy 8.18. We just did it during offering. Deuteronomy 8.18. Yeah. See, the, 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 the concern of God is that success should not spoil your relationship with him. And you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he sowed to your fathers as it is this day. Yeah. Your success 
is a byproduct of your relationship with God. So it should not be that along the way, your success takes you away from God. So you must be very intentional. As you begin to get rich, you must, you must psych yourself. Someone say, psych yourself. Say, I will psych myself that as I prosper, I will not forget. Yes. I will put God in the forefront of my life. I will talk about him. I will testify. It is the power of God that is making me to prosper. Yes. You see, and I believe that's why sometimes God never allows certain people to have a certain level of wealth. Because he's more concerned about your soul than your glory. <laughs> yeah. Because there are people you think they are cool. No, they are not cool. They are just broke. <laughs> you, may, you, may, you may confuse a broke person for humility. No, they are just broke. <laughs> There are people that if you give them little money and you realize that this person is not quiet. <laughs> this person is not cool. This person can actually talk. Money can give them a voice. Yeah. You'll be so shocked. So, so, so God knows at the level that it will now cause you to backslide. It's, like it's, it's getting dangerous. The blessings are getting dangerous. <laughs> so you must develop a capacity of remembrance so that God doesn't have a problem with giving you things you must be a worshiper you must be a ruthless praiser you must be a grateful child of God that God knows that every little thing every little milestone you give him the credit then God doesn't have a problem there are people I tell you you must watch them some maybe are in this church as we move on, the grace in this house will prosper them. Yo, what have I born? Jacobar Hatak. So to, to guard against forgetting, you, you, must, you must be intentional that as I prosper, I shall not forget. Yes. Yes. I'm teaching you how, how to be a remembering person. Watch yourself as the Lord takes you from here to there. Look, you should see certain girls. They were just girls in the chair when they get married. Oh, ah, I see when they say, Hallelujah. It's like all of a sudden. So, you see, it's success. Success. So sometimes they don't handle success well. They've been singing in the worship team. They've been dancing here like a mad woman. Now, after they get married, now they must sit down. Because they are MRS. It's like, like this thing of singing in the praise and worship is low class. Yeah. How, how can I dance in front of people now? Because I'm now. So you have arrived. <laughs> The little success of putting a ring on your finger has already gone to your head. So, so should God keep giving you more blessings? It's not promising at all that you will turn out right. So you have stopped coming for practice. I was washing for my husband. I was still cooking for my husband. So you are, you are no longer coming for practice. You, you All of a sudden you don't have time for God because God has given you a tip. Just a tip. But the way you are saving me, I committed myself that I will not forget your labor of love and your work that you have done saving the brethren. And, and so he gives you a tip. Yeah, a husband is just a tip. There's more in the kingdom. Now the tip, before the salary can come, the tip goes to your head. A husband is a tip. So when not the main thing you are running after a tip. 
It's like people are eating a restaurant and they tip you. Then you remove your apron. You then you are taking. You are so excited. You forget that there is a salary at the end of the month. This was just a tip. But it comes by forgetting. When success goes to your head, it destroys your memory. Uh huh. Yeah. And you see, I'm preaching here, or maybe you are following me online. Don't think this temptation will not happen to you. Everyone who has prospered is a candidate for pride and to neglect God. Yeah, once you are prospering, you become a candidate because the enemy knows how to use success to turn the hearts of people from God. Uh huh. So you have to fight aggressively against the spirit of forgetting. So this is, this is a very important thing. Fight it. They, I'm going to fight it. Where are they? These guys. Someone said, I'm going to fight it. Hallelujah. It looks full. Maybe the enemy doesn't want me to teach this. <laughs> it is possible. I'm about to finish. Number three. Number three. Hallelujah. Are you ready for number three? Yeah. Do not let the passage of time make you forget. I'll repeat. I'll repeat. Do not make or let the passage of time make you forget. Hallelujah. Yeah. Some people have got only short memory. They don't have long term memory. <laughs> Hallelujah. They only appreciate current affairs. Like what is currently happening. They, they are so happy. But Hallelujah. I said over time, they, they, time doesn't do very well with them. Hallelujah. Because the passage of time makes them forget. Yeah, I will explain. I'm a very good teacher, by the way. <laughs> Someone said time. Yeah. They, they, when things are happening, they are so excited. They sing your praises as it is happening. Yeah. But over time, the long term memory fails them. I say long term memory. Some say long term memory. Yeah. I love this. Let's read a scripture so that I can talk freely. Hallelujah. Perfect. Genesis chapter 40 verse 20 to 23. Then 41 verse 1 and 41 verse 9. Wow. Genesis 40 verse 20 to 23. Genesis 41 verse 1. Genesis 41 verse 9. I want to read them in that order. Let's go to Genesis 40 verse 20. Hallelujah. Look at this. Wow. Now it came to pass on the third day which was Pharaoh's birthday that he made a feast for all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief buckler and of the chief baker among his servants. 21. Then he restored the chief buckler to the buckler ship again. And he placed the cup in Pharaoh's hand. But he handed the chief baker as Joseph 
had interpreted to them. 23. Yet the chief butler did not remember Joseph, but forgot him. 41 verse 1. Wow. Time. Someone said time. Passage of time can actually take people's like it can it can also destroy your memory. Yeah. Then it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh had a dream and behold he stood by the river. That's 19. I'll, I'll fill in the gaps. No, I said did I not say 19? 9. Yes, nine. Nine, nine media. Media is not noting down when I say these things. Nine. Then the chief butler spoke to Pharaoh saying, I remember my faults this day. Thank you, media. What's happening here, apostle? I will explain. Hallelujah. There were two guys that worked for the king. All right. Yes. This is the pharaoh that was in power when Joseph was alive. So, the two guys that worked for the king, in Bible days in Egypt, the workers of the palace had a special prison where they were sent. So when they commit an offense, they don't go to maximum, they, 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 they had their own royal prison. Because they had to still be treated a certain way. Because when they are discharged, they are going back to work in an important place. So, these two guys had been thrown into that jail, into that prison. Okay? Because of the offense, one or the other that they committed. Are you following? And so, Potiphar was one of the guys that were very powerful in the land of Egypt. So, Joseph was working for him. So, when the wife said that Joseph was misbehaving, which was a lie, when they took action against Joseph, they took him to the same prison because Potiphar was like a minister or something, like one of the big tycoons in government. So, Joseph, it means that he's also like a prisoner of important people. So he sent to the same prison also. So I say, I hear you. So one day, these guys dreamed their destiny. Like the two guys I'm discussing. So in that dream, they didn't know what the dream meant. So when they were talking about their dream, there was a prisoner that had the ability to know what they are dreaming, like to interpret the dream, which whose name is Joseph. So when they were sharing that dream, Joseph heard it and he said, oh, do you want to know what you dreamt? Oh, they said, oh, you know how to interpret dreams? He said, yes. Actually, I already have the interpretation. You are going to be discharged very soon. You will leave prison very soon. But this is what is going to happen. You say, when you get to the office of the president, you are going to be killed. You, they are not happy with you. They are being investigating you. They realize that you are very dangerous to, to the president. So you, as you leave, you are leaving for your funeral. This is an interpretation of dreams. If I was this guy, I should have just begged to remain in prison. <laughs> And he said to the other guy, he said, this is your dream. I see a restoration to the position that you are in. You, there is no fault that was found against you. The, the investigations are over. So you are going to work with Pharaoh again. Very closely. Like you will taste the wine before you give him. You will become a litmus paper. To check if the wine is poisoned. You would drink, wait a bit, then you give the, the president. So that was the interpretation of the dream. And it happened exactly as Joseph had 
prophesied. Now Joseph as they were going, he was hugging them and kissing them bye bye. He said, please don't remember, forget me. Please remember me. Yeah. Like I'm here unlawfully. I'm not supposed to be. Please as you go, mention my name. That there's a good guy in prison. This guy doesn't deserve to be there. The Bible says where you are reading. This guy that, because the one who died can't remember. But the guy that was alive for God. <laughs> Over time, the Bible says for two years, as time went on, the memory of Joseph and how he helped him was destroyed. He started enjoying wine. And forgot about a prophet that prophesied him out of prison. Wow. Someone say a passage of time. Yeah. You must watch that one. Because over time, someone say over time, you can forget important events that happened in your life. Over time, you can forget important people that helped you in life. Over time, someone say over time. Someone sent me a message. Someone that I really love in this church. Knew in the church. But when I read the message, I, it triggered a thought that falls in this category. The person is here. And there's nothing wrong completely with the message. I'm using the message to preach the gospel. Can I read the message? We are here to stay daddy. This is our church, irregardless of what. Nice. Day and night, we continue to pray for your family and the ministry. We really love you and mommy. Amen. I read this message, it blessed my heart. Someone said, Bless his heart. As I was blessed, because I was in the midst of meditation for the preaching. This message became very relevant to make a point today. Because the Holy Spirit asked me, how many messages like this have you received in the past? And where are the people that sent you a message like this? And the Spirit of God said, they have forgotten over time. They forgot to say that they said, I can die for you. They forgot that they said, I will never leave you no matter what. They forgot that they said, I will be with you all the days of my life. I can kill for you. They sent the message and the time they were sending the message, they meant well. But over time, they have forgotten their ways. <laughs> this message really blessed me because it is also blessed me in being part of the sermon. Yes. People can sing your praises. That's why sometimes when people praise me, I, I, I deter the conversation. Yeah. If you are close to me, you know that when you speak nice, I also send you nice things like, let's talk about you. Yeah. I don't want to be drunk with praise because I know that it can hurt me over time. I may believe your words. I may embrace your words and be excited. But because of time, so I said time. He says, and the guy was sitting when the dream was, they were failing to interpret the dreams of her. That's when he said, hey, that Apostle Cabello guy. <laughs> said, there is someone in prison. Two years. So it's now you are remembering because you can't even find a solution for a, a president of a, a dream. You are about to be punished for not interpreting a dream. Now you are remembering. Over time. I'm preaching something. When you give your words, you must train yourself to not forget. 
You must become a man of your word. You become a woman of your word. No matter how old that word is, you must choose to remember. Don't let passage of time erase your memory. Yeah. When I received this text, I thought hard, long and hard. How many people have sent me a message like this? Yeah. Some of them even promise me they can die for me. I tell you, like a very nice message. And now I'm alone. They are not here. <laughs> they are gone. Sounds like they are gone. They, they failed the test of time to remember. Tell a neighbor, don't let the passage of time destroy your memory. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Number one, I said, What? I said, What? Uphold history. Number two, I said what? Don't let success destroy your memory. Number three, I said what? Yeah. Don't let the passage of time make you forget. Yeah. You know, as a pastor, this thing, like I'm telling me, I enjoy this, this traveling, going to marry people. I love it. Because I love people. I love people. Yes. I love people. But because a pastor loves you and he does certain sacrifices, it doesn't mean that you can take them for granted. Yes. That you must remember. 15 years later, you must remember there is someone who traveled the trip crossed the border, went to my country to go and wed me or support me. You, you, it doesn't matter how long back it happened. You must remember. Wow. Passage of time. Yeah. I love you, you know. And it, it's the same thing that happens with divorce. Yeah. The passage of time creates familiarity. Yeah. The same woman you used to say your nose is like the, the arrow of David. <laughs> when I look at it, it shoots me in the heart. And I melt in your love. <laughs> yes. These are certain types of notes. Your ears are like the ears of the antelope. Listen to me. People can forget over time. They, they can develop familiarity over time. Yeah. You look at your wife like this. The nose, the arrow is cut. <laughs> it's no longer an arrow. When you look at the ears, you don't see antelope again. He said. No, you are used to, time makes you get used to important things. Never allow the passage of time to steal your mind and to destroy your memory. Yes. 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 When you remember, when you decide, I will not allow time to make me forget, you treasure your spouse through and through in sickness and in health. Whether you be rich or poor. Whether they get disfigured as you give them children or you cook for them. <laughs> Figure can change either side. <laughs> Hallelujah. Sometimes anyway, it's you who cook for people and then they develop pot belly and everything falls apart. <laughs> and the center cannot hold. And eyes disappear. <laughs> And you, you are laughing and you are cooking. Now when the changes come, you don't appreciate them. And you want to look for guys with six pack. How can you want a six pack when you are destroying it? Or you give them children and they are disfigured. 
Now you start wanting my, my two one, my one eight, my two thousand. Ah. Have you forgotten that when you were marrying this person, you liked that figure? And you are the only thing that happened in their life. You are responsible for the destruction of the figure. So now you have forgotten. You are going after my 2000. Yes. Yes. Don't let the passage of time make you forget. Yes. 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 Am I helping somebody? So over time, the enemy has a way of making forget their beautiful utterances. They walk away from what they used to say. Wow. Somebody say, Father. Speak it. Say, Father. Help your son. Help your daughter. Never to forget. Yes. Over time. Never to forget. Over time. I'm preaching to somebody. Number four. Recognize the invisible hand of God in everything that happens in your life. Choose to recognize. Intentionally choose to recognize the invisible hand of God in everything that you do. Let's move quickly. Daniel chapter 4 verse 28 please. Daniel chapter 4 verse 28. Wow. Daniel. Let's move quickly please. Chapter 8 of Daniel. Chapter 4, verse 28. Sorry. Chapter 4, verse 28. Thank you. All this came upon King Nebuchadnezzar. Let's read, please. And at the end of the 12 months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar is the king here. Alright. And just in the preceding verses, he had a dream. Alright. And then Daniel came to interpret the dream and what the dream means. Alright. Twelve months later, he has forgotten the interpretation of the dream. <laughs> but let's read. At the end of the twelve months, he was walking about the royal palace of Babylon. Let's go. The king spoke saying, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. The kingdom has departed from you. And they shall drive you from men. And your dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make you eat grass like oxen. And seven times shall pass over you. Until you know that the most high rules in the kingdom of men. And gives it to whomever he chooses. The last verse. That very hour. The word was fulfilled. Concerning Nebuchadnezzar. He was driven from men. And ate grass like oxen. His body was wet with the dew of heaven. Till his hair had grown like the eagle's feathers. And his nails like bed's claws. What's happening here? 
Alleluia. I say hallelujah. This is the king of Babylon. Very powerful king. Hallelujah. I said he had a dream. I don't want to go there because I want to make a point. My time is gone. I still want to give you number five. You can't go without number five. It will not be balanced. I want to give you a balanced meal. He has a dream about this scenario. And Joseph tells him the dream is about you. If you behave like this. <coughs> Amen. If you behave like this, you behave like this concerning God. God says you are finished. Twelve months later, he forgot. He forgot the dream. He forgot the interpretation. He's walking in the palace. I think he was walking like David at the top of the, the palace. He was looking at the beautiful kingdom of Babylon. And he says, wow. The mighty hand of King Nebuchadnezzar has built this kingdom. Said the might. It's, it's like he's worshipping himself. <laughs> the Bible says while the words were coming out of his mouth heaven ruptured and there was a download of information. The owner of Babylon came and spoke. The one who really made Babylon, Babylon. Yeah. Because you have not acknowledged God. Your time is over. For seven years. You shall be removed from men. We will see what you will do yourself. You will be sent into the bush. You will walk on your four limbs. You will eat like an animal. Seven years. It says by the time he was done. He had hair like feathers. His claws. His, his nails were like claws. Forget his bed. His skin. He was living like an animal. From king to wilderness. Because the person forgot to acknowledge God. Hallelujah. Listen. Every little thing. The hand of God is invisible. Never think that God was not part of anything you have achieved. Never. It should never occur to you to to eliminate everything you do. Always acknowledge the hand of God. The input of God. Whether you understand or you don't understand. Because it's invisible. You know you can think you are making it. You, you can really think you are the thing. Like the king thought. I mean I'm the man. Just to be shocked that when he removes his hand. You can fall from king. It says the same hour to becoming an animal. Meanwhile, I mean, they, I mean, I think Babylon was built. I mean, I think Nebuchadnezzar did a lot of work. I mean, I think he contributed a lot. But the Bible reveals to us in his working, God was working with him. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Every little achievement, every little milestone, every little thing, like, like I told you the other day, I woke up one day and I, I said, my knees are carrying me. My knees are carrying me. Like, this is not anything, money is not a business deal, it's not a breakthrough. It, I'm talking about my knees. I began to worship God for my knees. Yeah. 
that there are people who can't stand. They buckle. Their knees cannot carry them. Every little thing in your life, you must see the invisible hand of God as responsible for its success. Never, never fall into the temptation of thinking, not one minute, that you are winning because of you. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I was watching Little the, the last race where he had a muscle pull. When he was running right, it was beautiful and he was winning and the country was rejoicing. And when he was running that last race and he pulled his muscle, it immediately occurred to me that maybe God is trying to help the young man not to become bombers. He's, he's managing his pride. I'm not saying God said, this is me. I currently now have a brain to think. <laughs> you see, because sometimes if you keep being successful, everything <clears throat> is working, is working. You touch this, tends to go, you touch, you touch. It may go to your head. For the muscle not to pull is God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. See the hand of God in everything. Yesterday as I was driving in the night, there was a cow coming straight to my car like this. Yeah. For us to see the car is the hand of God. I mean the cow. Yeah. And then for me to have a space to move away and to hazard for the person behind me to also slow down, to pass that cow, Yes, God. Train yourself to see the hand of God in everything you do. The last point, the last point, number five. Number five. Hallelujah. Am I helping somebody? We are finishing, we are finishing, please. I see some people are dozing. Continually recognize the people God has used in your life. To escape forgetting, continually recognize the people God has used in your life. You know, recently we were preaching on Laban. Hallelujah. Genesis 30, 27. Just that one verse I'm about to close. Genesis chapter number 30, verse 27. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Are you receiving something? Is this helping you? We're in a season of thanksgiving. And Laban said to him, Please stay if I found favor in your eyes. For I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Hallelujah. The Lord has blessed me for your sake. Hallelujah. You know, Laban was a very bad uncle. But he was aware that he is blessed because of Jacob. Hallelujah. You need to learn to acknowledge that you are blessed because of others. Ah, your amen is like I can just close right now. It's me, I know what I want to teach you. Hallelujah. You must you see, Laban was a bad uncle. I mean, I've taught you for weeks 
how bad Laban was. But at least something going for him was that he remembered that he was blessed because he had somebody in his life by the name of Jacob. Yes. You need to acknowledge that. When you forget that, you may start getting wild. You may get derailed. Yes. I was thinking about Lot. See, the Bible says, and Abram left with his wife and Lot his nephew. Have you read the Bible? But uh, by and by it says, and they were both terribly blessed. Abram and Lot. They had a lot of livestock. And then there was a meeting that was called. That look, our servants are fighting. Choose the left or the right. Whichever direction you choose, you lot, you can go. Me, I'll choose the one you don't like. <laughs> Lord failed the test that Abraham was giving him. That was a test. But Lord fell for it. He looked. He saw the green land. What will become Sodom and Gomorrah? And he said to the master, I will go this direction. When he parted from who made him successful, it was the end of Lot. He went, and you see this thing sometimes, it fades off slowly. <laughs> yes. When you come out of the covering or the grace that has been making you prosper and you walk away from it, sometimes it fades slowly. You, you can't see it. It's not abrupt. It's not, it's not quick. Sometimes it takes time. So over time, his cows were dying. His children were being proposed for by lesbians and homosexuals. It was just a mess. Now, by the time you finish reading about Lot, he lost his wife, his sons, he lost everything. He walked out, out like he left just his what he was wearing like this. Do you read your Bible? It says, and the wife turned to see, and, and then she became a sword. So she he lost the wife. When you keep reading, it says he only remained with two daughters. Hey. It doesn't say that. See, the daughters took with him. He went with him to the mountains. The daughters started to sexually abuse him. Out of them by their father was born the Amorites and, and the Moabites. So, so, so you say the end of Lot is terrible. We don't even know what happened to Lot after that. Like, he became insignificant. I'm preaching. When you walk away, so when it started, it was like a noble meeting with Abraham. Like, you choose this side. He should have said, Uncle, all that I have is because of you. My servants are your servants. Yeah. Call a meeting and tell the servants that Lord owns everything with me and your servants. You, the servants of Lord, you are the servants of my master. Lord would not have ended the way he ended. His ending would have been true. You need to be sensitive that certain things in your life are happening because of certain people. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. You know, recently my wife, my wife, they say, say something that just blesses me, you know, and I'm happy. Yeah, and I don't tell you I'm happy. I just see that maturity, maturity is here. Yeah. Can I share? You don't know what I want to share. <laughs> the power of not knowing. <laughs> That's the title of the message. Yeah. See, this trip to America that we just took, I didn't want to go. And my wife had it in her heart to go. She desired. So I said, I release you. We'll make sure that you travel well. We'll make sure that you are fine. I release you with a blessing as your pastor. And she said something to me. After that, sometime. She said, 
You know my husband, to be honest with you, my going is useless if I don't go with you. That thing, I've never told her she's hearing now. She said, I can go. I'll have a nice time. I'll she said, but when you go, <laughs> there's a difference when you go. Yeah. If we came together, see, you need to recognize, I'm trying to preach something here. You need to recognize that there are certain things that happen in your life because of certain people. That if you divorce yourself from those people, life may not turn out the way it is happening. I think I'm preaching, I'm preaching to someone. See, her recognition that there is something about, it's not about us, it's not about I can go and, no, it's that my going by myself, it's just a holiday. But when you come, when you come, there is something now about your coming. <laughs> Do you hear me? Is it coming home? Notice and recognize there are people that, listen, who accompanies you decides what accompanies you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who accompanies you decides what is in your company. So, the ability to recognize makes you to remember that I am where I am because I'm connected to this man. I'm connected to this person. It is the presence in my life that is making a difference. Yes. Yeah. And this, this I really in my heart wanted to talk even in the line of pastors. You know, many people abuse their pastors. Many people don't appreciate their pastors. Many people think that pastors are something else. But I want you to know that there could be things happening in the lives of the people. And those things are happening because of their connection with the pastor they are despising. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Just by being covered, being, you know, people joke about these things of covering. Oh, I don't need a covering of a man. I need the covering of Jesus. You can go and have it. <laughs> you need to recognize. You know, covering is like, it's like Wi-Fi. <laughs> yeah. There are certain places where you enter and you start receiving what is in the cloud. It's just and there are certain places you still have the same instrument, the same gadget, but nothing is coming. Yeah. But when you look at the two places with your eyes, they are just places. A place is a place. Some say a place is a place. Grace is like that. It's invisible, but it is very powerful. When you pull out of a grace, over time, see, I said over time, is that Lord couldn't notice that I'm now struggling with homosexuals and lesbians. It, over time, over time, he had to even run away from the place. But when he started moving, I walking away from grace. And he did it. And, and some, most of the time, when we walk away from grace, there is something beautiful like that grass. There is something attracting us. The, the English says the grass is greener on the other side. <laughs> hey! You are walking away from what is keeping you. Yes. I've heard people, and not like I, I mean, how should I, can I, I don't have the power to kill or to give life. But I've heard people live just for their demise. Yes. More than one. More than two. You live. You don't know what has been keeping you. Maybe there's a sickness in your body that is afraid of a grace. And as long as you are under a grace, the sickness it doesn't have the power to fight your body. 
The moment you come away from the cover, the sickness throws a party. <laughs> Say, yo, it's time for us to kill. <laughs> because what has been blocking us has been walked away from. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. You need to notice the blessing of your mother in your life. The blessing of your father in your life. You need to notice the blessing of your boss in your life. You need to notice the blessing of a friend in your life. You need to notice the importance of your pastor in your life. Yes. You know, sometimes when people want to do a, a personal appreciation, it's like a, an afterthought. Because, ah, conference, we will sponsor it. Be church building, we will sponsor it. But pastor's appreciation, oh. What, what is there for us to just fulfill this, this obligation? Yeah. See, because we don't value, we don't value important things. Satan easily hijacks our mind when it comes to people who helped us. Yes. People can help you. They stand with you. Look at us. We are from Silica. Silica. We are facing cows in the night. A person can just forget. <laughs> that these people played a role in my life. We are not talking about bondage. We are talking about remembrance. Yes. We are talking about the ability to remember. Yes. You know, when I look at you, I remember. The old lady is always calling me. Muru tekanka kebe kaleba ala lumpite te monna asatene faith covenant. The old lady, she always says that. Faith covenant. I, I, I appreciate a mind like that. People who don't forget. See, because when you forget, you may make terrible mistakes. You may sometimes even hurt people. Hurt people. You can hurt. There was once a lady who was not doing very well in her health. The church helped, did everything, helped, helped, sustained, was even buying special type of meals for the lady. Uh -uh. One day I read a newspaper. This is public information. I read a newspaper. The lady was in the newspaper and was praising a new church. <laughs> Someone said, remember. Yes. It should not escape your mind that there is someone who helped you. That there are people who helped you. Do you know that there are people who employ you, you don't have qualifications. They just employ you. Now you are working, now you are, you are being paid and you know how to press computer. Now the same boss, he says, I need a favor. Um, you know, will you work over the weekend? <laughs> Will you work over the weekend? Ah, uh, no. You, you people, you, you always, you always make us stay. You always, hey, you didn't have qualification. And the person hired you. You have forgotten. Forgetting is one of the most terrible sins that can happen to a person. Hallelujah. Amen. I say hallelujah. Amen. When Nebuchadnezzar forgot, he became an animal. Hallelujah. Don't forget. I said what? Those who helped you never forget those who helped you. Never forget those who helped you. And never Forget that there are certain things happening in your life because of somebody. Sometimes the grace is on the wife. I'm telling you, there are husbands who just prosper because of the wife they married. Your things just work or doors just open for you. And then you'll be shocked that because now you are doing well, you send this wife away, everything starts crashing down. So you, you wake up, you're like, ah, 
My things are not working. You think God is not happy with you? What, what? No. They... <laughs> The altar that was responsible for your family success. So you, you should be very careful how you deal with people. And you should never forget there could be something going in on in my life because of this person. Hallelujah. I'm done. It took long. Well, I'm done. Hallelujah. You can rise on our feet. Stretch. When I remember Thank you, Jesus. The Lord Help us not to forget. Done, I will never Help us not to forget. Go back anymore.